TV.com. Today we've talked a lot about saving life through rescuing, but there are different ways that you can do that. Today is actually National Living Donor Day, and Belinda Lane with Donate Life Mississippi is joining us to celebrate and then tell us a little bit more. Hey, Belinda. Hey, how are you? I am doing well. I know this has been a busy day for you. You've been out and talking to schools, but I wanted to take the time to at least celebrate the fact that today is National Living Donor Day. So for you guys, what does that mean? What is that all about celebrating today? Well, today is a huge celebration for us because today uh, we are thinking about living organ donation. It offers another chance to someone who's a transplant candidate. It reduces their time on the waiting list and And it leads to a better long-term outcome for the recipient who is receiving those life-saving organs. And so here at MORA, we celebrate uh, National Donate Life Day, MORA, which stands for Mississippi Organ Recovery Agency. And then today is sort of focusing again on the fact that there's multiple ways that one can find themselves getting the organ or the tissue that they need. And it's not always at the demise of someone else's life having come to an end. It can also be through living donors. And I think, you know, these are the type of stories, Belinda, that makes the news where they found a kidney at Disney or, you know, I think a a recent one was an Uber driver or a cab driver or something offered up a kidney and happened to be a match. I can't remember, you know, the exact details. Um, but, you know, it also happens every day, too, without all the limelight. So how do you describe, like, the most common types of living donors? What are the things that those of us, you know, on this side of the dirt could still help with? Uh, so that's that's an easy question. One of the things that we take into account is that um, folks can live with one kidney, one lung, a portion of their um, of their liver. Uh, we have people who donate kidneys all the time to one of their loved ones or friends. And so one of the examples that I always give to the uh, teenagers is Selena Gomez, for instance. Selena Gomez uh, received a kidney from her very best friend. So that shows you where that match of a living donor can come into play. I had a co-worker who uh, shared one of her kidneys with her father. But that list goes on and on all the time where people start to see, okay, so I can actually save somebody else's life right now, as you say, while we're still above the ground. Uh, And here we are at a point where uh, we had a 13-year-old who was in need of a liver. His father was a perfect match for him. So he was able to donate a portion of his liver to his son. And um, the thing about the liver, though, and I like to say that it regenerates itself, and that's one of the good things about having uh, those particular living donor situations in which you can actually see that folks get to get to actually live out a great and fruitful life while they are while that uh, donor is still alive. Do you have to wait, Belinda, until you know someone who needs it or if you feel like the Spirit's moving you in that direction or you would be willing to give that to the right, you know, recipient? Um, Can you just, can you yourself put yourself like on a list or reach out or do you find it more of you're moved by knowing the individual or being related to them more? Well, it just depends on what your thoughts are about doing it now. There was a story in the news this past weekend of a doctor who actually decided that she wanted to to just give a kidney to someone who was in need. She um, matched up perfectly with someone and just decided, hey, I'm going to give uh, to whoever is on the list next that, that matched with me. And so sometimes people are uh, moved by that situation. If you remember several years ago over at Jackson State, the um, the um, uh, person that was uh, um, there who uh, was actually reaped the kidney from someone else, uh, the mascot, his name was Wavy Dave, and Wavy Dave was a needed kidney, and he received a kidney from another gentleman that was not of his same color. And so uh, even though Wavy Dave did not survive a, a long period of time but afterwards, but, you know, just to know that, that there are people who don't mind giving an additional, giving their organs to someone just to make sure that they have an opportunity to save their lives. It's a 
a great gift. It's one of the biggest and most immeasurable gifts that you can certainly consider giving. And so when they think along those lines and they want to do it, we say go for it. And also, too, with living donors, there's a lot of talk, too, about tissues. And I think the kidneys and the liver are one that, you know, may get more highlight. But what are some of those tissues that a living donor could give? When I think of that, I really don't know what I think of, Belinda. But <laughs> Well, well this, that's a good question because uh, I was in a classroom this morning and uh, we were talking about how people who are in sports and military, uh, they tend to tear their ACL quite a bit. So you can actually have your have an ACL donated uh, as well. So those are some of the things that we just kind of forget. And I often talk about uh, tissue for skin grafts, tissue for um, for women who've had um, – who've had breast cancer, a lot of times they need additional uh, tissue when they're going through reconstructive surgery. And so we don't even take those things into account, but tissue is is very much needed for all of those particular things. And I think and it, it makes a person's life so much more meaningful to be able to go back to uh, looking and feeling the way that they once did. You know, and I think, too, as, as uh, being a donor, um, or a registered donor as I am myself, you you hope that if you do go but while your organs are still viable that you're able to pass that board and help. But how cool is it to know, too, that maybe you could still be alive and sort of enjoy in the saving of someone else if that's a connection or something that you feel sort of led to do? I think more folks just need to hear about those stories um, and that they're, that's an option, right? Like not everybody has to do it. It's not something that you're guilted into. But if you feel like led to that way, that there are avenues for you to be able to be that for somebody. Oh, definitely. Definitely. There are all types of, of living donation. You know, they're directed, non-directed, uh, someone that's on the list. And, and, and of course, kidney or, or any, uh, any organ that pairs well with uh, someone when, it, when a transplant candidate has someone who wants to donate a kidney to them, uh, um, the test revealed that the kidney or organ would not uh, be would be a good match. That's a wonderful thing to be able to see in your lifetime. Absolutely. If folks want more information, uh, Belinda, about all of the above, right? Like just read about it, hear stories, whatever they may be. Where do, where's like the best place to go? Uh, well, of course, you can always come to our website. That's mora, uh, m s o r a dot org. We would certainly love to have you uh, come to our website and find information there. And if you need additional uh, links or additional information, you'll be able to find all of them right there on our website. And then how important is it to to sort of think through or think about having that little heart on your license by being a registered owner? Oh, that's, that's one of the most unbelievable things. When we think about the number of folks that are listed on the waiting list in Mississippi alone, there are over 1,300. And so to know that one organ donor can save eight lives, one tissue donor can heal or impact 75 lives, that's phenomenal in itself. And so uh, if you are on the fence about it, we just encourage you to go ahead and get that little red heart put on the, the license, either at your driver's license station or you can also go to your uh, hunting when you get ready to get your hunting and fishing license. You can go online anytime at registerme.org or just, like I said, go to our website at Mississippi Organ Recovery Agency. That's msora.org, Mora for short, but msora.org. You can certainly register and sign up to be a donor. All righty. Well, I appreciate your time today, Miss Belinda. I know you've had a busy one. Uh, what else schools did you hit up today? Oh, I was over at Northwest Rankin High School, but I also want to make sure that we announce that we'll be having our 5 and 8K in the district on April 22nd at 8 o'clock a.m. If you haven't registered, be sure to register your team today. All righty, there you go. Good way to get out, get some more information, get a good exercise in for a good cause. And just learning more about what it means to be a living donor or to be a registered donor, I think is a good thing as well, Belinda. So I appreciate your time. Well, thank you. We appreciate you guys. All righty, there you go. Who knew? You know, I wonder if you were able to donate your ACL 
to one of your favorite professional athletes that needed it, and then they went on to win a Super Bowl or win, you know, an Olympic gold medal, if by definition you could share in that success? Like, I wonder if you could get a Super Bowl ring along with them or if you could get a, you know, an honorary gold medal.